the 2023 Acer Swift Edge 16 might just be the perfect laptop for you. So let's talk about it. Yo, what up YouTube? Uh, thank you so much for checking out this video. I do hope that you find it helpful. Um, so today we are taking a look at the Acer Swift Edge 16, as I mentioned. This is the 2023 refresh of what was a pretty okay average um, laptop from last year. But I think there are some specs to this thing that make it very compelling for the right person. So what I wanna do, just you know, walk through, we're gonna do the normal specs, look at the build, you know, what's all included in this laptop. We'll go through some benchmarks. I'm just gonna try to keep the benchmarks rolling along the bottom of the, uh, of the screen here because I tend to ramble at times and you know at times and your time is valuable. So try to get through this as quickly as I can. And then once we get done with that, I'll throw in some um, gaming benchmarks so you can see how this thing games. And then I'll end with you know my recommendations, whether I think this is a good purchase and if so, for who. So like we said, this is the Acer uh, Swift Edge 16, the 2023 refresh. And what this includes, is a uh, Ryzen 7 7840U. So this is the U model processor, uh, which includes the uh, Radeon 780M GPU, which is pretty awesome uh, as far as iGPUs go. It, this includes 16 gigabytes of RAM, as well as a one terabyte Gen 4 SSD. Um, so just looking at this thing, let me get it powered up here probably should have done that ahead of time. Um, but we'll just talk about it. So uh, obviously the Swift Edge 16 means it's a 16 inch laptop. And let me just see if I can get a uh, nice little YouTube video going on here for you guys. So yeah, big, beautiful screen as you can see, 16 by 10 aspect ratio here. It's a 3.2K OLED panel. Uh, with 120 hertz refresh rate so beautiful screen uh, it's 100 percent srgb 100 percent dcip3 and 99 percent adobe rgb and it claims to get up to 500 nits of brightness so screen is immaculate um, as far as the build quality on this so it says that it's made of this aluminum alloy um, chassis and it's got some give to it, right? It's not gonna be in your razor blade, your XPS, your MacBook type of feel. Um, it's aluminum alloy. It feels a bit plasticky, um, but that's to reduce the weight, right? That's the reason why they use it. So it's not terribly flimsy, but not gonna be the highest quality as far as chassis build that you've ever seen. But the reason why they would use that and why I think it's actually a good choice is this is a 2.7 pound laptop and if you've ever held a 2.7 pound 16 inch laptop it is strikingly light um, you know i have a asus g14 behind me which is like 3.7 pounds feels like you're carrying a cinder block compared to this thing um, the trackpad you know it feels glass i guess but if you look at some of the reviews and stuff from last year, I tried to find the same info this year and couldn't, but they called their trackpad last year Ocean Glass, which is just a fancy name for plastic. Um, so I'm not sure if this is that Ocean Glass, but it feels kind of glass, not really sure. Um, and then up top, it has a 1440p webcam, which is really nice. So you guys can see what I look like on the webcam right now. You can decide for yourself if you think it looks good, but it claims to be 1440p. Um, now, as far as internals in this laptop, um, it does have a twin fan design, which is really nice um, to see two fans on there. It comes with upgradable um, SSDs and the RAM is soldered. However, you can't upgrade the RAM, but it does have a upgradable Wi-Fi card, which seems completely useless because this has wi-fi 7 in it <laughs> so i guess in the next 12 years if you want to update your wi-fi you'll have the chance and it also includes a 54 watt hour battery which is the same from last year 
And then moving around on the sides here to take a look at the ports, this has two um, USB 4 ports on the left side, uh, or I'm sorry, the right side, I guess, depending on how you're looking at it. The two USB 4 um, Type-C ports, HDMI 2.1, and then USB-A 3.2. And then coming around to the other side here, it's got the second USB-A uh, 3.2. It's got the headphone jack, a micro SD slot, and a Kensington lock on there. And so port selection is pretty sweet. Um, for a laptop of this size, it's incredible. Um, so that's what the laptop is. That's what makes up the laptop here. Um, it does come with a full-size keyboard, if you guys can see. Um, it's got the full-size keyboard, so because of that, the trackpad is a little bit offset to the left. Not everybody's a fan of that, but if you need the keypad, that's just kind of the standard that you, you, know, you tend to see in the laptop game. You get the full-size keyboard, you get an off-center trackpad. Um, it is what it is. So uh, what else in the specs um, about this thing? Uh, the screen is glossy. So, um, you know, it's going to pick up reflections from light and stuff like that. Uh, but most OLEDs are uh, glossy screen. So that's what it is. So let's look at the negatives. We'll look at, so we'll do the negatives, we'll do the positives, then I'll show you some gaming benchmarks, and then we'll wrap this thing up with my opinion on it. So the negatives here. Uh, the trackpad is very loose. Um, like looser than I would expect even a bad trackpad to be, which makes me think maybe this is a QC issue on this um, specific laptop. Um, let me know if you guys have tried a Swift Edge 16 and if the trackpad is like obscenely loose on that one. Um, it's accurate enough and the click is fine, but it's very loose. So that's a negative. It could be fixed if this is just a one-off with my model here. So. We'll give them the benefit of the doubt there, but that is noticeably awful. Uh, the speakers, you know, it just, just has the two down-firing speakers. They're cheap, not great, but, you know, you can hear stuff if you need to hear it. Uh, the battery. So the battery is probably a bit of a weakness um, for a laptop that's a thin and light, you know, sort of an ultra-portable, even for being 16 inches. Um, According to the website, it claims to have eight and a half hours of battery life. And that's probably, that's according to Best Buy's website. Um, I couldn't find anything on Acer's website. So that's probably a typical usage, you know, surfing the web, that sort of stuff. I ran a battery eater classic test, which kind of puts a heavy workload on your computer. And I ran it at the 3.2K resolution. Um, so heavy workload, I got four hours and 41 minutes um, of heavy workload, which I think is pretty good um, for a laptop like this. That's not terribly expensive. So, you know, I think maybe that eight and a half hour range is probably accurate. You know, four hours, four and a half hours of heavy work, eight and a half hours of light work is probably fairly accurate there. Uh, the probably last negative here is the 16 gigabytes of soldered RAM. Not a huge negative because it, this isn't necessarily a content creation machine. It's not necessarily a gaming machine. So it's not the biggest deal, um, but it is soldered, non-upgradable. And the fact that this has an iGPU means that the GPU is gonna be borrowing some of that RAM. You know, if you do happen to play games or mess around with content, whatever it happens to be so, now you're looking somewhere around, yeah, I don't know, 12, 13 gigs of RAM overall. So not bad. It's not a deal breaker by any means, but it is a limitation, something you guys should know about. Um, so that's the negatives. What about the positives? Um, the positives is the CPU and the GPU are awesome. Uh, Ryzen 7, this is an eight core, 16 thread, um, lower powered, um, you know, CPU, but it comes with that Radeon 780M GPU, which is, darn near a budget dedicated GPU at this point. Um, games very well, as you guys will see here in just a few minutes. Um, very capable uh, GPU. And also the, vi the video that you're watching when you saw the DaVinci Resolve times, um, that's edited on this laptop, this video, and rendered out at 1080p, so not shabby. Um, the webcam, again, 1440p webcam is pretty nice. Um, if you're gonna use this for 
schooling, for business, conference calls, that sort of thing, you're gonna have a pretty quality webcam. Um, the build quality and the weight, you know, again, it uses aluminum alloy, so it may feel a bit flimsy, but it's not really, it's built well, but boy, getting a 2.7 inch, um, 16 inch laptop is ridiculous. Um, just amazing. The next positive is the screen, gorgeous screen, 3.2 K OLED, 120 Hertz refresh rate is amazing. Um, top-notch screen, and then upgradable storage. That's great, you can throw a lot of storage into this thing. The port selection as well, as we've already mentioned, is great for a laptop of this size, this weight, to cram in you know, two USB 4s, two USB A 3.2s, HDMI 2.1, wonderful port selection. And then lastly, Wi-Fi 7. Do you even know somebody that has Wi-Fi 7? Um, so that's just great future proofing that you can you know, hold out of this for a while if you need to, especially because it's not necessarily a content creation machine. It's not necessarily a gaming machine. It's just a machine with a great CPU and a beautiful screen and an all right battery. That can last you for years. Even as you upgrade laptops around it, this would always kind of have a place, I would, I would think. Um, even if it was just a laying in bed, you know, in a hotel room watching Netflix kind of a thing. Uh, it would serve a great purpose there as well. So um, what's okay about this laptop? I would say the keyboard, you know, we talked about that. It's big, the keys are fine, they're clicky, uh, or they're mushy, they're not overly clicky, but I don't think it would limit your ability to type, you know, long-term or type fast. I think it's fine. And then looks, you know, it's a pretty average, bland looking laptop outside of how big it is and how thin it is that kind of makes it stand out but you know kind of bland and looks are subjective right i kind of like the look of it because i don't like overly flashy laptops and stuff like that you know the the typical kind of razor you know with the neon green snake not really my thing um oh i did forget to mention it does have a pretty accurate um fingerprint reader, and I believe it has Windows Hello, so facial recognition if you wanna use that as well. So that's the laptop as a whole. Um, let's get into some gaming benchmarks and I'll come back with my final thoughts on this. So I hope you guys found those useful. So who is this laptop for, right? Who, should you buy it? Well, first off, should you buy it? Yeah, I think so. Um, I picked this up for $1,350. I thought it was a steal when I saw it. And outside of the trackpad issue, I still think it's awesome. Um, so I do think it's worth purchasing if you're the right person. So I think this laptop would be a perfect laptop to look at if you're sort of looking towards a MacBook Air but maybe you want something in the Windows environment rather than Mac OS. Um, because I think this is very comparable to the MacBook Air, um, but better in a lot of ways. You know, first off, you're gonna save yourself uh, quite a bit of money, which is always nice. But it's the same weight as the MacBook Air 15, 2.7 pounds. Um, it's only slightly thicker. I think the MacBook Air 15 is 0.44, uh, and this is 0.51, so only slightly thicker. 
um, but it's bigger and it's got a better screen than the MacBook Air. I mean, this has 120 hertz refresh rate. I think the Air is still 60 hertz, um, which is shameful for a laptop of that size, but I digress. Um, it's got comparable CPU performance. Uh, the MacBook Air is gonna be better in single threaded performance, but they're still kind of close in, um, in multi-core. And, you know, it would be nice if this CPU was a little bit more powerful, but it's largely, I think it's rated at 28 watts. I never saw it peak over 20 watts when I was running it in games and Cinebench and that sort of stuff. But because of that, it never got over 74 degrees Celsius. So um, the low powered CPU is there for a reason. This is a thin and light and it stays relatively cool and the fans don't get overly loud in game and in Cinebench. Um, the largest decibel reading I, I got was 45 um, decibels and that was holding it about six inches off the center of the keyboard. So it stays relatively cool and stays relatively quiet, which obviously the MacBook Air stays very cool and dead quiet because it has no fan. So um, very comparable there though. Um, this has a better port selection than the MacBook Air. I think that has the two Thunderbolt 4. We've talked about the ports on this, they're great. Um, and then last but not least certainly is this can actually game pretty well. <laughs> you can actually in your free time do some decent gaming. Um, while still not being a gaming laptop. So I think that would be great. I mean, if you're a student, for example, going to college, whatever happens to be your high school and you need to take notes, um, do that sort of stuff during the day, but maybe in the evenings, you still like to play some maybe older AAA titles, some Overwatch 2, uh, you know, those type of games, you're gonna be able to do that fine on this. And that 120 Hertz refresh rate is gonna be pretty nice. Um, so I think that would be well. And then obviously if you're sort of in the business world and you want something that, again, maybe you're a business professional, but you got a little bit of kid in you. And maybe in the evenings when you're not taking care of the family, you still want to maybe mess around and play some games. You can still do that on this and also get that good webcam, um, nice, big, beautiful screen, average battery life. So it's not going to really limit you there. Um, and I think I forgot to mention, this only comes with a 65 watt charger. So, I mean, you literally can just take your cell phone charger by and large and charge this thing. I mean, my cell phone, a Pixel 7a has a 65 watt charger, uh, I think. Or actually, no, I think I'm using a OnePlus 9 charger that's 65 watts. So either way, right, um, you don't even need to bring another charger with you. Um, your cell phone charger can take care of charging this thing. So I think there's a lot of benefits to this laptop um, with some setbacks, but I don't think they're deal breakers because of what this laptop's supposed to be. So uh, I hope you guys found this uh, review useful. Um, I am gonna be returning this because of the trackpad, so I'll happily answer any questions that you have, but just keep in mind, I may not have long-term sort of um, questions to answer for you there. But if you found this helpful, please drop a like, consider subscribing to the channel, all that stuff really helps. But I'd love to hear from you in the comments. Um, just about this laptop or really just life in general. All right, guys, have a great day.